Hello, you lovely lot. We are back. We finished with the European division. We're going to hop over the pond now and take over with North American Counter-Strike. It's exciting. It's a little bit looser. Sometimes we have the most hype moments on this side of the division. We'll see what happens today. We've got some great matchups for you. My name is Henry G, and we've lost a lovely member of our team, James. He's well, he was over there, but the space is here, so let's just do that instead. Yeah, well, that's yeah. fine. He's How? off to the airport. He's flying home. He's got some business things to do. So he'll be, he will not be joining us for today, tomorrow, or the day after. So this is a two-man ship from now on. It is indeed, yes. You and I riding together. It's kind of weird because normally we replace an analyst, but it's not normal for one of our commentators to go. Mm. So it's kind of a weird situation, but I think we can own it. Uncharted territory. We Luckily, haven't commentated together before, have we? We have at Dream yeah. Valencia 2015. Crikey, I can barely remember. Yeah, we it's did. A long time ago. We did like three maps together. So that was a long time ago. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to get through this. I'm sure we'll be absolutely fine. If you've got to involve, want to get involved and show us uh, what you think, talk to us online. You can get involved in the social media. It will be uh, obviously on the YouTube account already. Being involved in the Twitter at ECS or hashtag ECS6 or visit the website CSGOLeague.com to get all the information and tell us what you think about the show so far and indeed the games. James, it's all leading to some grand finals coming up. Where are they being held and when are they taking place? Arlington, Texas, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th of November in the eSports Stadium. It's being built at the moment. It's going to be brand new, built for purpose, which is pretty cool for eSports. Another step forward for the whole scene, I guess. The eSports machine continues yeah, e to grow. eSports machine, that's a good one. Um, so there we have it. It will also be an opportunity for you to get some drops here on the broadcast. We know you love points. We know you love skins, cards, all sorts of things to be eligible <laughs> when you get these points. Uh, the way to get some on this broadcast is to hit the Get Loot button. It means you can hook up your face and account to the broadcast. And while you're watching, you are eligible for the points that will be thrown out sporadically throughout the show. I believe we've given away something like 6 million points so far. Indeed, James, look at that. 6.4 million points have been dropped so far. That's hype. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Get yourself some nice skins in Counter-Strike. Or, I mean, you can get, I think someone, at least one person, a few people have redeemed PCs, entire gaming PCs, yep. monitors, AWPs, all kinds of things. And just to know, we're going to give away 30 million in the online broadcast alone so you need to make sure you're here for every show you're hooked up you're watching and you can be part of the fun but there we go that's all the admin taken care of and now we can look at the teams that we're playing in the north american division let's have a look and see what will be happening here it will be team liquid at the very top they had a couple of rough days though james losing when their coach was playing but i don't think that'll be a massive problem mib are creeping up on them though they seem to be having a pretty clean run in the league so far and cloud nine i have to say have impressed us quite a lot recently with a new roster yes indeed with the turbulence they have had and and perhaps the turbulence to come. They have been looking pretty damn solid. Of course, Kududa will eventually be outgoing, but for now, they look like a solid five. Absolutely, I tend to agree. We'll see what can be done here as it's going to be the today's schedule as well. We'll have a look at who's playing. Cloud9, MIBR. That's quite the awesome matchup to kick things off here. And we'll see whether they will be able to topple MIBR, who looked quite strong recently. Uh, both rebuilding in a sense. MIBR just trying to uh, reclaim former glory and show they are a world-class team once again. They've definitely been turning heads at big events. Obviously, the major managed to get top four. They've won a couple of trophies this year, but nothing really significant. They want to get a bit more under their belt and definitely want to get to the ECS finals. We'll then finish things off NRG Complexity. That feels like a game that should have already been completed, but that's really hype. That's going to be a good one, right? Yes, Complexity continue to surprise and upset if you if you consider that. So um, I think that Complexity, again, we're not sure where exactly they should be in the table. They are taking it further than some might expect. Again, we kind of new Complexity. I feel like it's a new era for them and it's at the very beginning, so it is a journey of discovery with them. Um, NRG, always a strong team, probably top two, top three team. MIB are definitely contesting for that at the moment. Absolutely. So lots of good counter strikes to be had today. Um, I'm using Dad's headset. I'm not going to lie to you. It's making it incredibly difficult. Hold on. Hello. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, now <laughs> I, I couldn't hear myself. That was a bit of an issue. I don't know what settings Dan's been using. But Probably the wrong ones. Can't even, no wonder he struggles to talk sometimes. Can't even hear himself when he speaks with the headset on. Um, but there we go. Um, first game coming up then, Cloud9 MIBR. I think this has got potential to be an excellent game. I think Cloud9 have really impressed us with their new lineup so far. Um, they've come into this with, uh, I, I'm not sure, it's like the, the remnants of some of the Fnatic team with Flusher and Golden coming over. I'm surprised that those two would play with each other once again after yeah. what happened, for example. But uh, it seems like it's going reasonably well so far. They've got some decent results and they seem to be playing at a very impressive level. Uh, there is one small, or maybe rather large caveat to all of that. Skadoodle's still in the squad and we know he's going to be replaced eventually. Um, but still, he's posting decent numbers still and yep. making sure the team stays alive here and playing a support rifle role. What have you made of that so far? 
Um, I, I think it's interesting. Obviously, the, the bigger focus is on Automatic, who's picked up the AWP, and that's been pretty awesome. But as far as Kudidal is concerned, I think he's been he's been holding his own, but I, I need to see more evidence to see exactly what is what is going on as far as he's concerned. So uh, we don't really know. I mean, he, he's going to be in situ until they have a, a player who can take his place. That might be two weeks, might be three months. I don't know. Um, but it, I would imagine it will be a learning experience for him as well, because that is very much away from what he has been doing for the longest time. The problem is learning on the job against MIBR might be a problem. Absolutely. Um, I'm excited for the prospect of this game, though. It feels like for me, MIBR are the favorite. It's going to be Mirage to kick things off. Um, always an exciting map, a, a map everyone can play. Essentially, it's very similar in terms of the approach. No one has a, a crazy play style, really, on that one. Maybe some teams are more aggressive on their CT side. I feel like that's going to be a massive uh, asset for MIBR going forward. We know they've got Fur, right? And that guy is lights out at aggressive play. He loves to push towards the A ramp, towards B apartments. He loves to be a snake in the grass at all times. Um, do you feel like they be able to contain this? Everyone knows that Fur does it but he still gets away with it almost every single time, you know? I think that the, well, at least Flusher will be suited to that kind of madness because he almost comes from that with his old team. Mm. Um, as for the rest of them, I mean, they're familiar enough with Fur. Uh, it depends on who he might be going up against. Probably not Skududu. I guess they're going to be on opposite sides, maybe, of the map. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, he is, he is an issue. He can do whatever he wants with whatever he wants. And it's very hard to contain Fur no matter who you are. So is absolutely going to be a problem. I, I do wonder, with now the Swedish additions to the Cloud9 side, how much the likes of Dewey and Tarek can try to abuse versus their old opponent, because Cloud9 are a team who were always going to have to become a new team when uh, once those players had left, and I think they've done that now. So I don't think things as, were, are as they were before. Well, they had a really rough run uh, at the Major. They went from being champions to going out at the first stage they turned up to, which is a bit of a shame. But they are rebuild rebuilding right now, and Automatic is the main AWPer. It's some of the best CS I've seen him play this year. Like After the Major, it seemed like his form dropped off. He maybe lost interest. It's difficult to uh, maintain the same enthusiasm after you win a Major. That might sound really strange. You think it make you hungrier than ever. But it just pits so much pressure on the team after that. They expect brilliance from you every single time. Yeah. If you don't actually live up to that expectation, you get a lot of attention and people saying it was fluke and it was lucky that you won the Major, for example. And it's difficult for you to find that love for the game still. I feel like with him being the AWPer now, um, He'll be able to find that enthusiasm again. And it seems like he's taken to the role really quite well. Yeah, it's been surprisingly consistent yep. and very, very effective, which is, which are two things which are really awesome because obviously we only recently started to see automatic orping on short B of, of overpass. Yep. It's one of the few places where you saw it. So he's gone from... from a little bit here and there to just a such a dramatic change. Yeah, it's I'm like really an entire career change, really. This is going to be a great game. I feel like it could go all the distance. I'm going to go with MIBR on this particular one. I feel like their firepower right now um, is a little bit stronger than the structure Cloud9 has. I feel like mm. Cloud9 will play a more defensive game and try and hold them off. But I feel like the likes of Fallen, for example, I feel like he's in great form right now. We're seeing him post some amazing stats and his close range play. We cast him on train the other day, right? Yeah. He's dropping like 36 kills or something in regulation time. It's like an unbelievable performance he tweeted after he considered himself to be the king of train hard to argue it was very how, good, he, how do you challenge that he he was nuts they will we actually be playing train after this so that's going to be an interesting battle yeah. to follow but mirage first i'm sure he'll be getting stuck in um cloud nine have got their work cut out for them they have had relative success in ecs so far it's been like i think like mid table right now are they like third or fourth maybe i don't really bit tell someone near the top but they haven't played as many games i think they've played eight in total so we'll see how they develop into it um what are the Winning factors, do you think, for Cloud9 here? They are going to take them down on Mirage. What can we really look to to uh, pull it out of the bag for them? Let's try to work that one out. On Mirage? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a tough one. Well, maybe we didn't even have time. Apparently, the game is live, so... We're going to jump into the game. We'll have to find out live and direct from the server. We'll get into the first one. It's Cloud9, MIBR on Mirage, and it will be the CTs of MIBR kicking things off here. And we're going to have a CZ in the hands of Fallen Stewie. He hasn't actually bought. He's gone for the old classic. He has got seven hundred and fifty dollars. Does that mean he just bought a decoy? Is that all he bought? Well, where is the decoy? Maybe just threw it at the start of the round. Perhaps he did. All right, then we've got the charge coming in from the likes of Cloud Nine. I think the mini map is the wrong way around. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> that's really interesting. The T's and the C's. That's I'm going to ignore that. Golden versus Four. <laughs> And he's dead. Never mind. So the conditions to win for Cloud9, I think they have to keep MIBR broke as, as much as they can. There we go. Colors are swapped. Thank you. 
Lovely. Um, it's a tough one because I just feel like stylistically, I think this is a good matchup for the likes of MIBR. So, I mean, what do you think? Do you have an opinion? Um, I don't know what the way one. in is Sorry? for Cloud9 in that respect. Yeah. Well, Flusher and Golden. That is such a weird thought to me that they came back together after they removed them, after all the glory they found, <coughs> after all the tweets. It seems like they're happy to continue together. But uh, let's see how this one goes so far. Great start for Fallen, saving up for the AWP. We'll open things up, take him down. That's Flusher being dropped. Remember, this is the eco. They're going to be buying up AKs in that third round. But uh, you want to keep it as clean as possible with your CTs, especially the likes of Fallen, who will just be using the pistol here. Flusher was just doing a ring around the rosy. Golden doing practically the same thing, just bouncing his way through, but Fur is there for support. Capable with a great number of weapons in this position. One minute on the clock. <laughs> Tarek has a gooshed tag on. I need to get shot in the head, so I guess it is appropriate. Oh, and he, in, the, in the top right, he does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his new company, I believe. Oh, is it? Yeah, he's made like a server company called Gooshed. And uh, anyway, Rush is going for the knife. This might not work out for him. Oh, that was not the correct one, I didn't think. He had options. I think the sandwich player would have been more beneficial because he got on his head and maybe got guaranteed a kill. Wasn't the case. And we'll go to zero. Cloud nine. Still yet to post a round. But this could be the one. AKs are out. Smokes as well. And their opponents are quite a lot of firepower, more than I expected. Two rifles and an AWP. That's smart play from Fallen. I think that's the way to operate. In that second round, instead of getting an SMG, I think we'll see that become the standard. With the MP9, how brave a soul is he? All helmets on the T side, of course, so he will not want to take the jewels, take those engagements. Very unfavored with the MP9. Stewie with one of the two rifles. Dave, why don't you get an AWP though? Because Fallen was on the CZ. Very important for the CT side. The second smoke now in the window position. And Cloud9 will take their time. Automatic deploying the last smoke grenades into the window once more. So no cover for shorts as they move towards connector. They've got the numbers, they've got the guns, and Skadoodle's just waiting for the eventual peak, and Fur gets taken out. Skadoodle will open things up here, I'm not sure. And Fnatic can, sorry, if MIBR can hold this one off, we'll see whether it will be successful. Cold Zero waiting on the bomb site. Only got the UMP, good for one and a half frags, but looks like Tarek will have so much to do here. Fallen with the AWP, looking to finish things off, but he'll be taken down. Almost certainly, Skadoodle will get the kill. Gets to hold an AWP for all of 10 seconds and then throws immediately to automatic. Sad times. Skadoodle going 16 0 in his first FPL game. And then, announcing his, then is announcing, announcing his hiatus. Impending hiatus from Counter Strike. Yeah, I'm not sure we'll see him return to a pro team. I think he'll experience a good life as a streamer and realize, well, don't get half as much stress doing this and uh, try and replicate Stroud's success perhaps, but uh, it will be for firing off speculative shots towards middle through the smoke there. Did spot one, but unable to connect the dots, but Cold Zero certainly can. Skadoodle walks into his crosshair. He looks for a bit more as well, not falling back just yet. He knows he has to do a bit more work, throws away the orb to recover the AK-47, which allows him to go a bit further. His teammates getting the information that now B is clear. He's gonna, is he gonna deliver an AK and fall back and get the orb? That might be an idea. However, it looks unlikely as Flusher makes his way through the entrance to T-Apps. Fallen not expecting that. Golden will get taken out. Well then, five versus three. First being picked off. And so it's automatic. Instant trade from old teammates, old friends, old buddies, old pals. Now Rush, he's made footsteps. They know exactly where he is. Surely they do because of hold position. Either way, MIBR will win the round. Three to one now. Indeed, I think that stylistically MIBR have Cloud9, Cloud9 outmatched at the moment. Maybe until they uh, get a fifth player. Uh, yes, I think the problem is that why would you bother doing all the theory right now if you've got Skadoodle, right? Like, 
he knew he was facing him. There's not much point grinding out. I don't think he'd want to sit there doing all the strategies and changing the defaults and stuff. Like, they've obviously got a, a basic game plan that's been working for them. So uh, stick to it, try and do what they can, knowing they've got to replace their fifth member. Fur continues to apply the aggression here. He's going to get the first frag of the round, dropping a smoke to find a bit of space here, but players all around him. He could be in serious trouble here, focusing on the flashbang. It does get them, but he's already dead. Four and four, and now we'll see if the Cloud9 team can capitalize upon this. I doubt it. Gold's in the final guaranteed kills here. There's the first one. We'll see if he can continue his rampage here. They'll with consider the that the boost E, so they may not expect Rush to be in a similar position. Well. There's the information. Now where is Flusher? Not far behind. Carrying the bomb. Last man to fall. Four to one in favor of MIBR. And uh, well, Flusher's got 3,500 here. They're going to buy up anyway. So perhaps some overspending was done. As he goes, sees it only. Says an eagle for Flusher. Maybe he picks up a weapon from a teammate. Well, with some gimmicks. Ooh. What do you make of this? Probably not the best idea, but Skudoodle's down below to trade. Maybe needs a bit more support from the teammate there. But uh, still, an equal trade. Tarek still with the secondary orb, and Cold Zero will patrol the window now. This is the first map between these two, and currently MIBR 4 1 up on the CT side of Mirage. Definitely still recoverable, extremely days here, but this frag might decide the round. Cold Zero, very low. As he waits and falls back, they now got window control. And maybe even jungle, because as you can see, there's only one TT on the side, but Tarek holds towards B, automatic, almost gives that up for free. And now Stu in towards T spawn, he'll get lots of sound cues here. Maybe overstends the mark, but still gets a frag, falls back. This is actually looking wonderful for him now. It does a lot of damage towards Skadoodle. 45 seconds remaining. Definitely still possible to recover the round, but Golden will have to fall back. It's so weird seeing Stewie 2K frag Tarek. Still uh, a little bit odd for me, but yeah. uh, there you go. Golzira may have heard it. Oh, the gun is poking up. I'm sure it is. But nothing appears to be coming up on the radar for Cold. 24 seconds left, and uh, oh dear, the bomb is just below him as well. I don't think he saw it. Skadoodle now, out of options, we'll try to save the AWP. <coughs> Excuse me. As the clock ticks down, and my will move to round number five. You can see that one Cloud9 round in the middle. Skadoodle, still knowing his angles, will not overpresent himself. Even with armor, automatic will pick up the AWP. Yeah, I think it makes sense. <laughs> Skidoodle. Very disciplined, throwing it over immediately, but as the man with Kevlar, it would make sense for him to go for something. Yeah, and he had the good spawn as well, right? So why not see if he can make it work from the palace position? He's just going to go quickly and see if he can open things up towards the steps potentially, but. Further, of course, the poison utility on that side of the map, which he does effectively. Sometimes, so the orb can do absolutely nothing with that. So the damage is quick. They're looking for 6 1 MIBR. We'll be in a great position right now. This orb looks like it will have almost no impact. Might just have to be a clean save here. We'll see if that's the case. Cloud9, just two pistols. The orb, unless Scar gets some crazy opening here, it should be an open shut case for the Brazilian side here. Slight peppering. There we go. All is lost. Round number six for MIBR. We grow from strength to strength. I think the leagues come at a, a, a crucial time in their development as well. I think that surely grinding all these match matches out must be very beneficial to getting all the cogs oiled, everything turning in motion together. Yeah. Everybody settling into their roles. And especially with, with two new players on the team, of course, they all play FPL together. But um, I think in a professional environment as a team, 
if you have two people playing as a as a mini team, like you have Oscar and Roxanne Art Sports, for example, then they can start to learn each other's tendencies, which means there's less communication in a crucial moment, and they're more fine tuned when it counts. Flush it. Shooting out the football tunes. Yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking that too. I wonder if you noticed. Um, so there you go. It's one minute twenty the clock. A decent map control coming in from Cloud9 here. Rush and Golden and the window, or oh, I should say CPL room and connector covered. Jackie, yep, though, waiting beneath the vents. Is he all unaware of the possibility of connector being overran? Needs to be very careful from above. There is a player there. Dr. Flashbang seems to know the risks involved as well. Rush will get the better of him. 50 seconds remaining. Looks like a potential B split here with a bomb in position. Tarek, one of those difficult either one and done positions or could be something fantastic if they overlook him, allow him to have a bit of trigger discipline. Time will tell as to what we'll see here. 35 seconds now. If they don't check this, it's a lot of trouble. But the timing's not really spot on, but Automatic will still hit the shot. Do they still go for this? Cold Zera is in a very tricky position. It's difficult for Automatic with the AWP to actually face him. And now they know he's there. Is it too late? Maybe not. 20 seconds remain. Automatic has to try and plan. Is there anybody else on the site? He will use the last few pressure seconds, but that does allow more time for the CTs to emerge like a crocodile from the water. The fawn is taken. I think they have to eco here as well, even with the maximum loss bonus. A partial buy at the very least. The Deagle sees their arm up. A few nades. Normally, teams will execute towards A on these sort of rounds with a couple of smokes. They haven't actually bought that much, considering they get $3,400 per play on the T side next round. So the utility is the problem. They're going to try and push towards short. Skadoodle catches the nade in his back pocket. And we'll go down to 32 health. Trying to stop the T's from venturing into this position. Rush with a big P250 frag. He could even throw that rifle out of the smoke if he thinks he is doomed. Ooh. What? Wow. Automatic. Okay. Well, if Cloud9 are able to win this round, it does give them basically bonus money if they can survive in the numbers. Not expecting that angle, but Tarek doesn't hit the spray. Four versus two. Rush has picked up the M4. Fur could get a number of frags here. There's the first one. The bomb is still rotating in T-spawn and crucially, Fur get taken out and they win by elimination cloud nine. It's automatic running for a weapon. Cannot reach one, but an AWP and an M4, not too shabby. Maybe overextending a bit too much there. MIBR, great shots from cloud nine. Can't really argue with that, especially that one's wonderful from Golden. But uh, MIBR didn't have to be that aggressive necessarily. 7-2, Cloud9 pull around back. A much needed one, got a very healthy buy now. AWP for automatic, seven kills to his name. Flush up, once again, takes another grenade to the face. And Stu has control of the game, the flash is a bit too much for him. He still gets a kill somehow. Looked like he was calm under pressure there, so fallen as the nades, the Molotovs start to come in. He's burning though, needs to be very careful there. As Golden gets the second frag of the round, Fallen still in position. Flames didn't quite reach him in the corner. Bomb will be planted, and we have a three on three ensuing here. That's a kill for Automatic, in fact. It looks like that was a locked kill for Fallen, but Skadoodle should confirm the round at this point. Money has been drained. MOBR with their great start, losing to the pistols and let them here. And it's now for looking to maybe to save the M4, maybe you can find the AWP. Just don't think that's a possibility as he heads towards the ladder room. Five rounds in a row for MIBR. And in two rounds, the money is gone. Very, very expensive it can be on CT sides. Just like that, everything changes due to a pistol round. Terrorists win. Everything changes. Oh, oh <laughs> they're almost lining up both in the red. That would have been something. But now the swing of power is firmly with Cloud9. What do MIBR choose to do? $2,000 per person, there's an M4 on fur. Has to go for an aggression on ramp in Palace, perhaps? He's got a forward spawn, but so is Automatic, who will watch the cross towards the connector position. No connection, though. This is just that one rifle. D4 pistols, pretty much hard eco. 
far and have to do something absolutely brilliant to give him a chance here. The only player with a rifle, didn't fire any real nades. Zeus for Stewie. He's in towards underpass. I made a great flash for that. Oh, yeah? It's on the Twitter. Not original, though, but... Made an easy lineup for people. So you can stand in that corner and have somebody flash for you. Although, who does the flashing is an issue because that would mean you've got no eyes on mid. Unless someone's looking from toll booth. Anyway, you see the extra the extra chance the USP gives you after the first thing. P2000, Golden turns faster. Golden should be deceased now, but he's still alive. And the bomb makes its way into B. Now it might be uh, maybe a question of saving this M4 of uh, who moves into the entrance of the apartments. All is well with the world as far as Cloud9 are concerned. Organization has been doing big things across multiple games recently. The North American org with the Korean team from London in Overwatch. I've and I think that. in League of Legends they've been doing, they've made the final or something or semi-final. Uh, they made, they knocked out the Korean team, I think was the big deal. Okay. So they made it to the finals through that. I don't watch. I just, this is well, my almost, almost anything else. Through Twitter. Yeah, I've never played League of Legends. I've broadcast, I've produced League of Legends, uh, though. Oh, yeah? To face it. At Gamescom some time ago. It's too bright for me. Too many pretty colors. It's like Bejeweled on, on steroids. I'd agree with that. But uh, here we go then, MIBR losing their lead after three rounds in a row against them. The money's still not a mate, they can't even buy the AWP at this point. They're going to take a conservative partial buy. I'm surprised at that. I thought they'd buy into this, no problem. But uh, just uh, for MP9, if they still going to save Lost Furnace, they can get the double orbs out again potentially between Tarek and Fallen. Going to set up the frag. The alley oop for Rush. And this should be both killed. Golden. It's a little bit dicey out there. They've got an AK in the hands of Fallen now, but he doesn't want to go any further with that, considering. Oh, what's this play from Tarek? Oh my gosh. That's a little bit scary for him. That might cost the rounders. He's now the walking wounded. Fallen does spot one heading to the shore, but didn't strike in time. Trying to run distraction, perhaps. Shooting through the smoke, maybe in case it was a short push. And Tarek is still there. Surprise. Fails his jump, though. And maybe that will save him because they'll use the range now, the T's of Cloud9. One versus two. This is interesting. If you had an AK, does he go for it? With the AWP, the value of saving rises quite significantly. Haven't seen much in the name of Kriegs in this in this game. Kriegs or Orgs. We have an all day, really. I think it's actually very true what you said uh, the other day about comfort yes. with the with the AKs and so on. Yeah, I think so. It's just they've been using the AKs for so long, and sure, you can look at the stats all day, but ultimately, like it does feel a lot different, and that muscle memory just yeah. doesn't come naturally with that weapon. It feels, it looks different, it sounds different. Um, like it's just, just the whole thing is not the same thing. You have to put the hours in. If yeah. you haven't done that then why why would you keep buying it at big matches if you haven't got the practice in? It's a difficult justification with so many officials going on uh, all the time, so many lands, and the theory has to be done as well. When are you finding these hours in competitive games, not just deathmatch, to practice the weapon? So it's no surprise to me. Although I like the idea on the CP side of the silence and Brawl equipped and then using the Org when you feel like you need yeah. that extra firepower. I've started doing that as well. Ooh. Oh. I wondered if it would all obscure his vision, but of course he's probably playing on lower settings than we are. <coughs> I'm assuming that it's easier to see through that on, on lower settings, but I play on high settings, so I can't tell you for sure. Tarek moving around the back of the smoke now. Again, another high variance spot. Golden maybe realizing what might be possible. We'll crouch. Up he goes, and down goes Golden. Golden and Flush have been trolling Tarek in FPL recently. Have they? Yeah. What they were trolling was going on? <coughs> Pardon? What trolling was going on? Oh, they were... I think they were doing some... Golden was trying to bait while Flush was trying to stab him or something. And they were saying, oh, backstabbing, hello. <laughs> something like that it was on Reddit. A little screenshot. I don't watch FPL. I'm too busy playing. My road to FPL is, is, is very long. Yeah, it's more like... Uh a lifetime road, isn't it? Yeah. 
keeps getting longer, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Adding a few more pavements to it as you go, a few more stepping stones. But uh, here we go. Rush is actually going to position to shut this down. He just saw a guy. I was about to say, dude. Right, he's going to make sure he can get double kills there first. Oh, oh no. no! What? What a reaction from Tarek, though. You got to yeah. give props to that. Very That's fast indeed. So sick that he pulled that off, but still, Rush is going to be gutted. That was two kills on a plate. A boosted all there. Ah. We'll find a shot. Cold Zera potentially wins out the round there. Rush is going to be a little bit upset with himself. He thought that was the guaranteed kill towards short. It looked like he would have been that. There it is. Let's flash out. Ben taken down. A five on three. Looked like he was about to swing out of control. Still plenty of money for Cloud9. Maybe I'll take the lead. Here's Tarek going to pick things up with the little jump up. The oh, wow. There it is. The reaction. And Cold Zera to close it out. Lovely work with the orb. Skadoodle stopped in the choke point with the bomb as well, which made things even worse. Because it was left on the high ground. Smoke just in time. Molotov towards Connector to take the angles away. Fallen holes of smoke. We'll tell his team connector is open. I'm watching the smoke in case someone's creeping. Someone is creeping. But they haven't crept too far. A shot through the back box. You can wall bang um, through top mid boxes, especially the positions where people will throw the mid connector smoke, for example, or a pot flash. As you can see, those, well, one of those channels is narrower. The right hand side of where he is is where you throw the pot flash from. Speaking of pot flashes, Fallen's got one of his own to check the cat position, but nothing doing just yet. Ooh, with that walk on the rail, does Fur read that is very likely a player is in the window. Wow. Fallen. As usual, close range. Finding the shots, and it looks like it's MIBR just running away with the situation right now. Golden isn't towards the window. Spotted him. Allows him to get out of there, but Cold Zera. Double kill coming in. Oh, it's happened again. Another opportunity for two kills, but somehow MIBR escape with just one player going down. That's another round shut down. And maybe Flasher can do something with this. That kill has to go in his favor, I would say, though. We'll head towards B. And we have the rotation from Cold Zera, but too quick. We'll find the kill. 9 5. As Cold Zera swats. Swaps teams. I guess we've lost someone on the server. He's here. done. He wants more Americans. Yeah, it's like, you know what, guys? Lifetime of Brazilian right barbecue. <laughs> Where are the burgers at? Um, it's Golden that's gone, I believe. Did he just rage go after missing the shop? He's gone to look at my YouTube videos. Probably. My grenades. So it was Golden that had two on the screen, missed the shop. On the first, well, he got the first kill, couldn't fill out the second, called there a flick to him, and he's just gone off the server. So, uh, technical pause here. We'll see if we can get some info as to what's happening. I finally learned the strafing window smoke oh in yeah? T spawn. Is it, it, took a, it took a while. So, you see above the B sign, yeah. there's like, well, to the left of the B sign, there's like a part of the wall that's grey. And then, if you look at the corner of the window, if you line it up on that column to the left of the B sign, slightly yep. lower than the window frame. You run sideways until your crosshair's in the pink of the wall where the A is, and then you do a jump throw from there, and Can it will land it in a window. Every time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. I practiced it until I made no mistakes, as one should. It's much better than practicing things in fighting games, though, like a combo, where you literally need to practice it like a hundred times without dropping it at once. Wow. Otherwise, you're going to drop it in tournament. That doesn't sound that fun. <coughs> a lot of repetition. A lot of repetition. What about that muscle memory? Yeah. Doing it without thinking <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, asthma, asthma. Woo, asthma. Do you have asthma? I did as a child. Unfortunately, I uh, grew out of it. So, I have Fair no inhalers, nothing now. I haven't had any problems. Pharaoh Munch. And I've, I was a smoker for 20 years as well. So, like, there's a... Uh, well, 20 years. Henry, yeah, 12 years. 20 a day, Greer. So, uh, it's mad some people do 40 a day in What's the that? UK. Yeah, I don't know how people manage that. Where I do you find the time? I was maybe doing 10 a day tops. <laughs> I don't know how, yeah. I don't know how people can do 40. That's yeah. pretty, pretty wild. The killer for people trying to give up is the is the social smoking. Some people don't even smoke, but, like, especially yeah. with, with females, I feel, 
Yes. If they even smoke, but when they'll go out, they might have one cigarette. It's because alcohol just makes you feel like, oh, that's that's a good idea. Cigarette, wow. Strange. They accompany each other very well. Um, but don't take it out. It's not worth it. Expensive. Kills you. Looks don't cool, do smoking. Don't do vaping. Don't inhale filament and bit piece, pieces of metal. <laughs> not good for you. No. Golden's back. It's the last round. It might be uh, recover <laughs> from a disaster few rounds. Looking for double digits in the first half. We'll see if they can pick it up. I'm sure they can, considering the buyouts up against them. Still seems to be a bit of a kerfuffle on the server, though. We've seen Cold's uh, The Man, The Myth, The Beast t-shirts. Yeah, do you think Vince got anything for that? Or should he? Maybe Some recognition. Maybe? Should he? Um, I think it's a matter of opinion. Yeah, what's your opinion? <coughs> I think that, not necessarily, however, it must be a little irritating to see at the same time. Yeah, it's such right? a gray area, isn't it? Though? Sure, it's yeah. you don't own those words. Yeah, I mean, so that's that's business. You can't you can't really take emotion into business, but, you know, it's something you'll think about. Maybe just send them a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> just for free. There you go, <laughs> there you go mate. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, speaking of sending things... The person who won this keyboard at the major, I still haven't sent them the keyboard. Although we've been working every day, so I haven't had all the time. And I find it hard to take my weight myself away from Counter Strike. That's a problem working. we're working on. Yeah. Well, I have like 130 hours in the last two weeks, <laughs> despite commentating eight games of Counter Strike a day. I don't know how I'm doing that, but. Will you be playing tonight? I think so. I'm kind of. I, I had a horrible sleep yesterday, which is why I'm talking gibberish. I had a tongue twisted. In really? A long time. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna not gonna watch anything. Not gonna listen to anything. Mm. Lights out at midnight, and just uh, bore myself to sleep. I fell asleep straight away. I was so wrecked yesterday. It was so. really. It was really warm in my place, and there's a spinning fan in my room, but it's kind of wobbly. Sure. So it, I can't sleep a bit because it's too loud, and it's also too, a bit too violent. Too violent. Yeah. It's like it's too much breeze in my face. So that's an issue. So technical issues still burdening us, but it looks like we're good to go. I can hear the <coughs> chatting on the server. Chitty chats. Lots of chatter. Man like Tyler. But here we go then. A chance for Cloud9 to find six rounds on the board. Doesn't look great though. One AK, one Galil, three lesser weapons, two of which are pistols. And a Mag Temper Rush. And uh, that might be an appropriate word. They're heading in towards the B apartments. Not going to be in super quick, though. There's a the smoke towards the short pillars. Rush, that's brave, but he times it well. Looking to open things up. Hit the flashbang deployed, but shortly goes down. No one to trade with him. It was just a gut feeling play from him, I think. See if he can get in as uh, CTs are repositioning. as a flashbang there as well, but no dice. And now they're almost off that position off. Actually looks like quite an effective one, but that's also quite effective. Hitting everyone in the back of the AWP as they cross over. No, not even jumping now. Trying to bait out his shots here, but this is all in vain. It looks like Coldzera has done absolutely enough. But there still could be a few more twists and turns here as it goes into a four on two. Golden, he'll be trying to protect Flusher as the bomb is planted, but not doing a very good job. He's gone down. That should confirm double digits here as Golden just going to be padding stats at this point. If he can get a frag, that'd be something for him but not much for his team. This is the final round <coughs> as uh, we wait for it to conclude. Look at the angles and window on the X-ray. Double peak. Seems like they pretty much know where he is. Stewie's standing on the fridge. By the way, that fridge is impenetrable. It's ridiculous. That fridge in the bloody... in the market. There was... I had a guy standing behind the fridge and I shot three times with the AWP through the side of the fridge and it came to nothing. There was zero damage, not even one damage, zero. It's impenetrable. I was going to make a video because for me, it doesn't make any sense. Why is it the strongest fridge in the world? Um, I don't know, man. Indiana Jones survived in a fridge. When the house what kind of, Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Have you ever got into a fridge? I uh, never closed myself inside one, no. The life of Henry G has not yet taken him <laughs> inside a fridge. Has, it hasn't been called for just yet, but you never know. <laughs> the um, you know. Let's have a look at this setup, though, shall we? It's going to be two smokes, flashbangs, and it uh, looks like a bit of a A fake coming in, or they're just going to be probing towards B and going for the A split eventually. We'll see 
And it looks like quite a detailed strategy here from MIPR. They're waiting for some CT aggression towards the, the Bartmans. B apartments for those joining us. The Bartmans. And uh, automatic with a smoke diffuse kit combo. Another teammate rotating over. That's called Zeras. Maybe a B play in general with Fallen. He'll be sending in the utility <laughs> now towards the A side. So he's smoked towards CT spawn, I believe. He's also molotov in. That's quite a convincing case in terms of the fake. Skidoodle, though, not taking any of it, as uh, he'll spot three or four players into the B side, but this is actually wonderful. He's the only player there. That fake is actually incredibly effective. I need to watch that again. Bomb has been planted. He is dead. I wonder if um, his play style will be similar with a rifle versus the AK and AWP, sorry, in, verse, in the sense of what he likes to do versus what he doesn't like to do. Flusher creeping in the apps, falling and will fall back. Does not need to die on this hill. Purely wasting time is good as well. Golden has found himself two frags. Two on two now. Automatic's one of the kit on the site. So if he can win his duel and Flusher can win this one and just keep falling away from the bomb site. The knives are out. He's holding on to it. And he will be punctured, but everybody will die. Ooh, in the face. Actually, that's why I have a chip too. Why? When I was in primary school, I fell face first into the corner of a wall and chipped my tooth. I chipped my tooth when I was at a party as well. Uh, I was drinking out of a bottle and someone elbowed me. Oh, crikey. I taking, I took a nice chunk off my front tooth. It's not very nice. That was pretty cool. Yeah, mine's pretty bad, but I don't want to, I don't think I'm bothered to get anything done to it. It's annoying though, if you're eating something, you bite into it and that, that part isn't bitten. So sometimes like if you're eating a burger, like all the Veg will come out because of the one point you didn't cut it off. <laughs> well, maybe you should see a specialist then, James. Get it sorted. Treat yourself. But uh, Cloud9 didn't treat himself this round. No force bite. They'll be looking for rifles in the third round as we'll see round 17 here. Smoke's over. The execution begins. It's an appropriate word. Considering the headshots are on the menu. Spanty will bring one back, but it uh, looks like the job is done. Mr. No, sorry. Crazy Gamer Men on Twitter. That's okay. the username. Got a says, question, have we? It's easier to see through smoke on low settings if you are closer to the Molotov, but harder if you are further away. Oh, okay. Thank you for that information. I guess you want it closer. You want it to be easier to see through. Yeah. I guess, I don't know, it depends on the situation. Oh, yeah, the Ooh. I can't play on low sen sen uh, sen settings. There we go. How come? Because uh, I've got too many shiny knives. You want it to look pretty? I really, honestly, I really get a lot out of my shiny knives. I love them. I don't mean because I know people, I just really enjoy them. It makes me happy. Good, that's all you need. If it makes you happy, James, you keep doing it. I think your sensitivity is half the sense of mine. Oh, you were watching me last night? Yeah, and out. mine is half of Dan's. Yeah, I. So you're really done. I think there. like I'm up there with like in terms of like pros that have ever used low sends. I'm like up there with one of the lowest. You've got the ever. turning circle of a tank. Yeah, so for me it's one full swipe of the mouse pad is like a 180. So that's like. Uh, of an XL mouse pad. Yeah, of a big one. So I have to do like double, double half swipes to do 180s usually. I'm surprised you don't have RSI. No, because I'm not RSI is normally in your wrist, right? I use my whole arm. Oh so yeah. I don't get that. I'm mainly wrist. I'm a wristy. I am a wrist. I'm flying, flying uh, the windmills around everywhere, you know, whole mouse pad moving around, keeps you in shape. Wax off. Yeah. That's uh, the ground here, Cloud9, with enough to buy. AWP for automatic, glass cannon though, rush, probing towards the air ramp. Stewie. Smoking over, Molotovs deployed. Quite effective. Oh, we are hairbrush. But it worked that out for him. Flashback actually gets Tarek. That was from the CT forces. What I said, did they just flash him on their own side? But it looks like Cloud9 will find all the frags required here. Bomb down. Cold Zera with the AK-47. Stewie with the Mac 10. He wants enough money, I believe, going forward. Cold Zera can do something about this. This is brilliant by him. He did it from the back, he'll get himself a nice upgrade, and Cloud9 make it to half the score of MIBR. 
plenty of work to be done by the North American side versus North American side. So again, Cloud9. Um, some A lot of people, because of all the hype on Reddit, are saying, oh, do you think Scream's going to go to Cloud9? But if you bear in mind that Cloud9 likely want to keep their core of three North American players, yes. they're probably geographically limited. Although I, I still think they'd probably end up playing in North America if they got a non-European player. So that is interesting as well. But it would only be for the mages, that would be a problem. Right? Yeah. So as long as I geographically fine. But uh, anyway, let's get into the action. Automatic and Golden kicking things off in emphatic style. We see plenty of kills coming in favor of Cloud9. This game is nowhere near down the looks of things. Automatic looking sharp now with the armor available to him. He'll be able to challenge a lot more aggressively as Fallen will be left in a five versus one. Down he goes as Rush finishes things off. Money should be stabilizing. That's actually not at all. There's actually quite a lot of investment from OBR, but it was less than that. What if they picked up a Dren from Gambit? Um, I don't, what if? What, what, what do you think that's a... I love a Dren from Gambit, but no, that's kind of your my, 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 uh, minor, isn't it? So, that'll be... Wait. That's not, because he's from CIS. Hmm. Anyway. Fallen flying into the A bomb site. I just want to see him on a good team. He's so sick. He's one of my favorite players. Yeah, he is good. I'll we'll keep thinking. See. Get some um let's get some players from Africa. Where's the African CS at? It's coming, bro. God, doing a land in Africa would be a disaster. Oh, Cold Zero, there's so many red players. He could win this, he could win this. Oh, that's a high health player. But eventually the trades will come in. Crikey. Wow. That was actually tantalizingly close. When he got this kill, it was just like, <laughs> wow, he could actually do this. Then he gets the high HP player. Luckily, they traded him out quickly before he could reload. But that was dangerous. 12 8 now. It might be R. We're going to close it out quickly, but uh, Cloud9 are fighting back. Great style here. Fur will be dropped with the initial play from MWR trying to challenge together. And will equalize the situation. The Fallen takes quite a lot of damage there. Rush goes down. And flush up, pushing towards B. Looking to get towards T spawn, in fact. So he's almost got a guaranteed kill. They will anticipate him. Will get the double. Certainly will. Oh! And at this point, is a bonus. Three in total. And it's Tarek left with nothing to do, really. He gets the frag, sure, but it cost them the round. Great push from Russia, absolutely epic by him. But still, Tarek causing some chaos here. He's got plenty of time to work with. Looks towards middle, and we'll see if he can hold them off. Uh, Golden Shadow betrayed his position. Tarek running to his doom. No goosh necessary. And now it is three rounds. The T side seemed to be a disaster. Flusher, I thought he had four here. How did he find the bullets? So close, tag down 7 HP, just one more bullet and that would have been a crazy 4K. Talk about a choke, choke point. Out of the way, please. Nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that smoked window, bro. Where are you off to with that smoke? Ooh, golden. Second peak is good for two kills. Area control with the Molotov as well, but Fallen will have a look. And Butcher's hook. Flashbang's good and Golden's good for three. Good doodle with some highlight reel transfer. And that is a nice brief round of eco counter strike. Certainly is. Nothing really to report there. Solid hold by Cloud9. MIBR haven't posted a round now. After losing five in a row, they won the pistol in the second follow up round, which got them to 12. He thought, okay, they'll finish this off quickly, but no dice yet. Cloud9 nipping at their heels. Off towards connect up aggression from the CT doesn't look too present here. It's going to be automatic actually with no smoke in the window here. Actually has a chance to find the first kill depending on when opportunities arise. Smoke in the window. CD tagging attempt from automatic. And now what does he do? Rendered useless from that position. He will be heard rotating by fur. Will that encourage a boost from MIBR? They've got two players on Cat, and they'll move towards B bomb site. Skittles taken out by Golden for standing in the smoke. Golden is still good for 15 bullets here. If, uh, somehow finds a way to emerge from the smoke like Scorpion. Man advantage for Cloud9. 
Got gold and around the default grenade trajectory spotted. He can raise the alarm to his teammate. Sorry, rush on the default. Baiting for automatic. There's a smoke. Can he escape? He can. Frags keep coming for Cloud9. Up close. Automatic. Leaves Tarek alone now. One versus three. He has the bomb. And all the CTs are on A. Not really much he can do with this, considering there's just over 30 seconds remaining. Automatic and Rush are relatively low. But why would they give him any sort of opportunity to get this bomb down? He could technically go towards B, but he's got no smoke for short. So they're watching that, and he'll have to go for a That was the first shot. There's a chance now, but still a very slim one, considering the positioning of the CTs. They've got him locked in here. It will have to be a perfect pre-fire towards his position. Automatic, though, nails the shot. And that's going to be six rounds in a row for Cloud9. As they're on the precipice now of tying things up. Here's the golden 2K. Perfectly done. Peaks it. Couldn't necessarily see both of them. Gets two frags. Automatic extinguishing the flames there and then finishing off the round with a couple of kills. We get into round 24 now with the smoke spoil towards middle. Pretty standard stuff and a force buy from MIBR. Now, this could be a little bit dicey for them because they've got two Galels, two AKs, and a CZ. Barely any utility. It's difficult to imagine a world where this works out for them, but they have got world class talent within their roster. Let's see if they can utilize it here towards B. Early flashes, all their B1 bounce out of the window. Warner's got the only remaining flashes. If you've got someone standing on the van, the, um, <coughs> the flash out the window helps as well, waiting out the initial Molotovs. So perhaps they're suggesting it's a fake, and maybe Tarek can sell that further. It's interesting to see which priorities he uh, peaks first in that position, but we'll more about that, about that later, because Kadoodle, they're lining up for him. Three with the silence done for. Time to reload as well, and the support if he needs it. Going for the kill, though. Fallen will get at least one frag, but the score has been tied. Cloud9 with 12, MIBR with 12. It's kind of insane how good Cloud9 have looked on their CT side. Remember, they don't really have a fifth player yet. Skidoo is filling in for them, essentially. He's doing a great job with this support rifler role. Holding towards B, finding all the frags required. And seven rounds in a row now. Smoke from Flush. I'm interested to see what that lands. Oh, we've got the internet smokes. That's right. So that's, I'm seeing this more and more these days of the CT smoke. It goes a bit deeper than that usually, so you can actually block their vision off. That actually does nothing right now. But here's Rush. Maybe it suggests some aggression, but aggression hasn't come. And then my BR would be in position to abuse that aggression. First, somehow trades that. What an awkward angle. Molotov towards Palace, but maybe too late because one player's on the low ground. Automatic misses the shot. Can't raise the alarm in time. But Fair will get taken out. Spots another one. That's a fantastic shot. He's an animal with the AWP. Yeah, he looks super sick, doesn't he? 19 kills. And once again, MIBR with almost no chance of doing it with this particular round. Good start, though. There's still so much to do. How did he not take any damage there? I'm surprised at that. Skadoodle missing out on two shots. Nade will tickle him slightly. It's up to Cloud9 to give this one up. They can still see the bomb. They don't have to overreact. They have a couple of flashes. Orlin has an incendiary and just under a minute to work with there. At best, he can bank on one CT becoming concerned about mid. To encourage a one versus one. Surely someone is looking here towards the ramp position. Now the information is known. Trying to split the plays up, trying to bait them out. He's automatic where the triple player. Skadoodle comes out. Everybody but Skadoodle will fall. But there's so much money on Cloud9. Rush with 12,000 plus. They've got cash for the shops. And now they're in the lead. Only the pistol and the second round won by MIBR. Everything else has resulted in failure. They haven't planted in any of these rounds they've lost. That's pretty insane, if you think about that. Not a single time has that bomb got planted. That means things are going very, very wrong indeed. Like, you're not even in the conversation to win the rounds. If you're not getting a single plant, they can't afford to buy up into this round. Cloud9 is completely running away with this one. Flash towards middle to get some intel here. The follow-up push from Flush up. Finds nothing, but that's good information to have. That suggests they're either getting ready for an execution or about to play contact towards B. Flash will get the first kill, though. That's for appearing from the con underpass, I should say, towards the connector. And he'll be taken down. Five on four, fallen in the flames for a brief second. Takes a couple of ticks. And he's got a scout. Definitely capable of finding some headshots here. Let's see if he can do it. Ready and waiting, but decides to fall back. 
I love Flusher being on this team. I think it's awesome. At first, it's like I have no idea how this is going to play out, but it, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. It appears that Cold has been left towards Palace. Now, the bomb's in mid. They could still go for the split towards the A bomb site. Gold just having a butcher's hook here. Spots Dewey. Doesn't want to commit too much to the kill, respecting the power of, the de of these deagles. And now the danger has been neutralized for the most part. Cold's pretty good with a deagle, but we're asking much of him now. 14 to 12. Our Cloud9 going to take Mirage from MIBR. It's never over until you reach 16, and MIBR are known as one of the most tenacious teams within the game. They're so good at finding comebacks and rounds where they shouldn't, especially the likes of Cold Zero. It always seems to deliver in these sort of situations. He's got 30 kills, James. That's not bad, is it? 30. But is it enough? You'd hope so, but apparently not so far. <coughs> Excuse me again. Oh, God. Let's see how. <laughs> right, I'll, you deal with that. I'll continue here. Golden will be challenged by Stu. A good opening for MIBR here, but the equal trade will come through automatic with the AWP. Nails the shot once again. He's got so many kills with that particular weapon. And we'll see the CT continue to apply the pain. There's just one player remaining. Fur, you've got no chance. And it was opening kill there for, Cloud, for MIBR, sorry, and still couldn't find access to the site. Once again, no plant comes through. Cloud9 outclassing them right now. This is amazing. Are you recovered now? It sounded like a big crash. And yeah, I'm just knocking, liquids everywhere. I'm cool? knocking things over. No, no okay. liquids. All right. We're all fine. We're fine. So many rounds in a row for Cloud9. I can only count to five, so I can't tell you how many rounds it is. Flusher in the lower ground. Smokes in the window. Oh, he doesn't get that frag. Stewie's not done with this just yet. Running back to the boxes with nine HP. Bomb still top mid and Fallen is starting to creep, trying to use the distance. Oh my god, that was huge. Surely Rush is good for that one. Is it going to fall apart now here for Cloud9? Well, logic suggests yes, because they have not converted any of their advantages so far. There's another one slipping away. Three versus three once again. They've got one smoke on the T side up against the AWP. Fell make sure it's dropping down to the site. That's all Skadoodle needs in that B bomb site. He'll make the advantage now. And it's up to Tarek, who's also in there. And it looks like it's over. This is the reverse sweep of ever I've seen one. Well, congratulations, Cloud9. That was absolutely stunning. I don't know how they pulled that one off, James, but I respect it. I, I'm impressed. And I think that uh, Cold Zero especially will leave a particularly sour taste because that was a 30 bomb from him and they couldn't get a single gun round on their T side. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And I've got to say, there are so many questions when Stewie left Cloud9, Tarek left Cloud9. Like, what is what is left? Where is the identity of Cloud9? But they're looking surprisingly strong. It's 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 still kind of surreal to me. I feel like I'm in a twilight zone, but here they are. This is what's going to happen, right? They're going to have a great run here online. Then Skadoodle's going to make that tweet once again. You know what, boys? I say. I'm staying. I'm doing it again. One <laughs> more time. One more year. We'll do it all over again. And why not? He's playing brilliantly right now in that B bomb zone. Fantastic frags from him. Golden, another fantastic performance from him. Automatic seems to be taken to the orb wonderfully. Every single shot connects. It seems like he really has found some performance. Skadoodle, no different there. Always found the kills in the B bomb site. They didn't get a bomb down in any of the gun rounds. Dude, Automatic is so sick with the AWP. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like how many other players have got that pocket AWP to this level? Just uh, in we'll the bag. More and more rifles maybe convert, considering what he's doing with the weapon. 24 kills. And Golden at the very top again. He keeps delivering kills. Russia, we up there with 22. Skadoodle, 17. Flush at 13. And Cold Zera, he's got to be gutted that that one does not deserve to be on the losing team. 3,100 damage brought into the game. 30 kills on the board. And it's nowhere near enough to even get a gun round in the second half. They got the reverse sweep. It felt like it was looking so promising. They won so much in the first half they win the pistol in the second and then nothing happens whatsoever once the game develops that does not bode well for the second map that's going to be train now mibr are a decent train side we know that but cloud nine the way they're playing right now and especially the way the opening is going for automatic this could be six points in the ball for cloud nine that was wonderful for them. yeah that was super stimulating i mean it's awesome i think in a short term it's interesting with skadoodle's play because you're not familiar with him playing a rifle on the B bomb side. That's not yeah. so. So you don't have 
the historical data to say he likes to do this, he likes to do that. So that's a problem in the short term. Will it pay off in the long term? Who knows? He might not even be here in the long term. Amazing game. I actually really enjoyed that, regardless of it being one-sided towards the end. Cloud9 played. Really exciting counter-strike there. Very efficient counter-strike. And we'll see if they can continue that, which on the second map will be trained. And we'll be back with that after this break. A few minutes and we'll continue. We'll see you there.